Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Julian Mosin McQueen with The Million Person Project. And I'm Heather Box. Today on Stories Are Power, we are going to be addressing the question, how do I stay connected to my story while I'm telling it? We hear from a lot of our clients, especially people who do a, a lot of public speaking, that they will find themselves feeling disconnected from what they're saying while they're saying it. They will find, feel like they're not really grounded in the moment. And so we want to make sure to avoid that at all costs. We want to ensure that when you're telling your story, uh, that you're feeling deeply connected and that your audience is feeling deeply connected to you. So we're going to get into that today. Before that, I wanted to ask you a quick question, which is just very basically, why stories? Why are stories such a powerful tool? Yeah, I think stories are such a powerful tool because they really create connection between you and your audience. And that is so much of what we are looking for in the world is to feel connection, to feel like we belong. And so when someone shares their personal story, you can really relate to them. Even if you can't relate to the details of their story, you can relate to the choices they had to make, to the values that they're sharing. And so it's really gives a sense of grounding that you're part of something. And it's really cool because there's a lot of research going on right now around this. And there's this researcher, Yuri Hansen, who does this research where he connects speakers' brains up to these you know, little machines that analyze them and does the same for the audience. And what he's found is that when the speaker is sharing emotional content and that they're and they're accessing those memories and it's lighting up in their brain that the same thing happens to the audience so it aligns with the audience and that's so cool because it's not only are you sharing your content but you're also sort of passing mm -hmm. your emotions onto the audience yeah i think it's incredible and and um you know, I think it's pretty like profound confirmation of what we know inherently around stories. Yeah. When you hear a good story, you, your heart beats fast, right? Mm -hmm. You feel things. Um, so when you're working with your clients, and as I said, we talk to people that feel disconnected, what are some of the things that you notice or see um, when somebody's not feeling connected to their, to their words and to their story? Yeah, so it's very personal for how people disconnect from their story, but there's a couple big general ones that I see a lot of people doing. And the first one is that when they get to parts of their story that they aren't as comfortable telling, they just like speed right through. They kind of harden and rush right over it. And that can be kind of confusing to the audience and they can feel disconnected because they see that the person on stage disconnected from what they're saying and are kind of avoiding it and it brings up more questions than anything else. And then the second thing, which is, is a total phenomenon, and I've noticed that I do it, I've seen it happen in the news, in, on movies, I see it happen all the time with my clients, is that when you start to share something personal that was hard for you, you kind of transition from saying I to you. So for example, someone will say, they'll be talking about something that happened to them that was sad. Like they'll say, my friend died in a car accident. And the next sentence they say is, you know, and then you just go on a bender and you don't really know where you are at in the world and what, what's meaningful and what isn't. And what they actually mean is that they went on a bender and that they had a hard time finding what was meaningful for them after that. But they have dropped the eye. Mm -hmm. And so being being aware that that happens can really help people to stay connected and use I and be more grounded in what they're saying. Right, and so th those, those things that you mentioned are ways in which people either take themselves out of the story or, or put up boundaries between themselves and the story they're telling and effectively the audience, right? Yeah. So, so what are some things that people can keep in mind or ways that they can ensure that they're, that they're staying you know, deeply connected and really feeling that emotional resonance? Yeah, so, so there's just, you know, a couple, which is slow down, you know, take a beat. When you're, when you're getting to the hard part of your story, just move through it slowly. The second one, like I said, is stay in the eye. Make sure that you're in, you're sharing your specific experience from an eye point of view. And then the third one is, you know, in classic storytelling tools, it's, about accessing, it's about you know sharing specific details and imagery and emotions of an event. But sometimes when it's really hard, when something that you went through was really hard, you don't wanna do that. And you just kind of wanna to say to the audience something like, 
you know, the year 2011 was really hard for me. Um, but if you're disconnected from why it was hard for, for you, it's going to be hard for the audience to relate to that. So it's about accessing a memory for, for you that represents what you were going through then. And it's about really honoring that. And it's sort of, you know, allowing yourself to acknowledge that you have overcome that and that, that it's like a sacred little indicator to yourself. Like, I have gotten through this and I'm sharing about it right now. And when you access that memory, even if it's, you know, you're not sharing it, it really helps the audience to feel what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, cool. Thank you for those tips. And I'll just reiterate, as someone who has given and shared my story hundreds of times, uh, these tips really help. So to, to recap, just when you feel that instinct to speed up and get through it, stop yourself. Slow down. I always take a full beat before I get into parts of my story that are tough for me. Okay? So slow down. Fight that instinct to speed up. Second one is make sure you stay in the eye. Uh, don't do the thing where you're talking about your story and then all of a sudden you're talking about the grand scheme and everybody's story, right? Stay in your own story and stay there with it and be conscious of that. And then finally, even if you're not planning on sharing the details, access the memories of those moments that were challenging or that were pivotal or that bring up emotion for you. Access those memories in the moment, even if you're only talking about them and it'll help your audience to stay there in the moment with you. So those are just a few things you can do. Of course, there's, there's a bunch more there. If you're interested in it and you want to work on it more, please reach out to us. It's what we love to do and we'd love to work with you. Thank you. Thank you.